Now, here's a question that probably nobody's ever come up with, uh, at least in this room, or most people had never considered, but how can America lose 14% of its gross national product every single year, almost $2 trillion, and not even notice? Well, Rob Freitas, is Rob here yet? Hi, Rob. Yeah, Rob Freitas came up with some really interesting statistics, and he found that insurance companies, plane crashes or other uh, calamities, insurance companies put a value on each human life anywhere in the world at a, of about $2 million, regardless of age, regardless of economic, uh, uh, your, your economic situation. Well, we lose about 52 million people around this world from natural causes. People die from natural causes. So if you multiply that times two million, we lose about a hundred trillion dollars of human capital is destroyed, wiped out, gone forever. Every single year. This happened in 2005. It happened in 2006. Every year since then, it's happening this year, and it's going to happen next year, and it's going to keep on happening until we start slowing that down. Now, the global net worth is only about $100 trillion, so we l essentially lose the entire tangible net worth of this world. I mean, it's in human capital, but human capital is what makes everything else work. Human capital is what creates all the cash, all the reserves, all the real estate that we see, all the stocks and bonds. This is all human capital, and we lose it every year. Nobody notices this until Rob came up with it. He also suggested each person has one book in them. We all have lives. Our lives are, for the most part, if you're here, your life is probably pretty damned interesting. And even if it's not, you still have a book in you. Many people here wrote books. Some people here wrote many books. Joe Sugarman wrote, I don't know, six books. I don't know, Mark Victor Hansen, just saw you walk in, Mark. Uh, he, he just a book machine. Mark, please sit up here at the head table. Um, the, um, but when we die, those books disappear. 52 million people die of natural death in 2005. That means 52, 52 million books were destroyed, about three times as many books as we have in the Library of Congress. Again, last year, this year, next year, the year after, this is going to stop. So death is not a good thing. Now, besides the economic loss, we have a tremendous amount of premature suffering and death. Aging, death from aging, costs us 100,000 lives every single year, and we, we're used to it. We accept this. And of course we do, because there's never been an alternative before. Soon, we won't need to accept this. We won't just get used to it. We're going to get used to something far better. We have soaring health care costs that are, in addition to the economic loss of people of lives that we lose, health care costs go through the roof as people near uh, the age of death. Not to count the suffering and the caregiving, the emotional and, uh, cost of caregiving and the economic cost of caregiving. So how does society benefit? Well, this, is, this should be pretty obvious. But I mentioned our most valuable assets are preserved to help solve all the other problems facing society. What are our most valuable assets? Human beings. The older you are, by definition, the wiser you are, the more you have to contribute to society, the more you can teach to other people, the more and better equipped you are to solve all these problems that we're facing in society that, 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 that grab the headlines. And the one that doesn't grab the headlines is, is 100,000 people die every day from aging. And this is the solution. If we want these problems solved, keep the smartest, most valuable people alive. You say, ultimately, we're going to be able to deliver extreme life extension, age-reversing technologies to everybody on this planet at near zero cost, just like every other major technology plummets in value or plummets in cost. Now, if we live longer, aren't we naturally going to be taking a longer term approach to life? Well, obviously we are. Are we going to appreciate life more and put a higher value on it? Well, if we know we're going to die 
in 20 years or 10 years or 30 or 40 years. Uh, that's one thing, but if we know we have an opportunity to be alive or will be alive for hundreds of years, even thousands of years, we don't know. Might not you take a more, more long-term serious pers uh, perspective on life? Would this discourage terrorism, for example? Terrorists have pretty lousy lives for the most part. They have very bleak futures. They do, they have very bleak futures. They have, they, 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 most of them don't have money. They, they don't show much promise. They don't have a chance for education, housing and clothing and food. I mean, they, they just don't have a very good life. The, the technologies that we're going to be solving aging with contribute greatly to the necessities of life. Uh, so I think people will be a little less reluctant to offer up their lives because they have a lot more to lose. Is, will this obsolete war? Well, you know, it, it's probably a stretch, but it, sh it really should contribute to it. Are people going to think longer and harder about the long-term consequences of their actions? Are they going to be more concerned with their reputations if they know they might be alive for another 100 or 200 years as opposed to 10 or 20 years? Long-term thinking as opposed to short-term thinking. Long-term thinking is going to solve every problem we have in this world, every single problem. And of course, these technologies will let us better utilize the planet and resources that everybody seems to have knee-jerk reactions against uh, that are not being utilized. Important questions, but we have a solution to help solve that. Now, we would think that everybody on this planet would, be, would embrace, wildly embrace extreme life extension, but they don't. In fact, there are many objections to extreme life extension. One of them is a knee-jerk reaction, and these are all, by the way, these are all valid and logical coming from the people's perspective. What are we gonna do with all the people? How are we gonna, if we're not dying, where are we gonna put all the people? I could talk for a half hour on this, as, as could several people in this room, and completely refute that objection, and that's the most common. And just for one example, we're not, even su we're not even suffering from a population explosion in this world. In the developed world, it, the, the opposite is true. Over, uh, underpopulation, population decline is a problem. If it weren't for immigration, the United States of America would be losing population. We have a real serious problem like they're having in Japan, uh, some of the Scandinavian uh, countries, Russia. But we could, I have a book, Life Extension Express, in the appendix. I, I take a whole Q&A section about, the, about these objections, and one of them is overpopulation. Scarce resources. Wow, we're going to use up all the resources. We have too many people. The fact is that uh, Julian Simon uh, showed that we have actually twice as much resource, twice as many resources as we need in this country to feed, house, and clothe every single person in the world. It's not the scarcity of the resources. It's the idiocy in how we're handling these. It's politics, it's distribution. It's not resources. And this doesn't even account for the resources, almost unlimited resources, that things like nanotechnology are going to create and, 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 uh, and clean air, clean water, and so forth, food, housing, uh, you name it. Uh, another objection is, wow, this is going to upset Social Security retirement plans. And you know, so what? Is death the solution to saving somebody's retirement plan? Jeez, give me a break. <laughs> Actually, we've already adjusted to this because at the beginning of the 20th century, the average lifespan was about 47 years. Now it's pushing 80. We've adjusted. I mean, if it weren't for the um, misappropriation of funds in, in, in the government, uh, Social Security and Medicare wouldn't even be challenged. I mean, that was self-funding. That, another story, but maybe some sanity, longer life will get us better leadership. 